Hello, and welcome to Music Therapy and Beyond. On this week's clinical episode, we will be talking about boom whackers. Regardless of where or with whom you work as a music therapist or maybe a music educator, you have undoubtedly used boom whackers at some point. This versatile, novel, and fun instrument has so many uses. Whether you choose them for their accessibility, portability, novelty, or ability to provide input for your clients and students, we hope you will gain some inspiration about new and easy ways to incorporate them in your sessions after listening to this episode. Craig Ramsell, a guitar player with a master's in management from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, invented boomwhackers through his company, Wacky Music. A full set of boomwhackers creates a rainbow with each color corresponding to a specific note on a scale. Boomwhackers produce musical tones through vibrations in the instrument when struck. The pitch of the instrument is determined through the length of the tube. The longer a tube is, the lower its pitch. The shorter a tube is, the higher its pitch. When one end of a boomwhacker tube is covered with what the manufacturer calls an octavator cap, the pitch it produces is lowered by an octave. Their simplicity and accessibility provide the perfect vehicle for clients to engage in music making right away with no musicianship required. This tuned percussive tube is a must-have for any music therapist's tool bag. They are easy to sanitize, to store, and to travel with. Clients are almost always drawn to them to try at least once, and you rarely have to repair them. They are even recyclable if they break or wear down. Boom whackers are far more cost-effective than xylophones and metallophones, are more portable, and still allow for orf-based music therapy techniques, improvisation, and a myriad of other things. I personally love utilizing ORF instruments, but they are not always financially accessible for music therapists, so I appreciate the boomwhackers as an alternative. Today, I will be sharing my ideas for using boomwhackers based on the goals potentially being addressed in the session. Let's start with an easy one, color identification. If you are a music therapist working in a school system, you've likely encountered a goal on the IEP related to color identification. Sometimes it can be tricky to think of a way to address this goal in music therapy, but boomwhackers are a really easy way to do this. You could create a musical game with color cards that match the colors of the boomwhackers. It could be really In the moment, an improvise where you just hold up a random color card and ask your client to match the card and play the boomwhacker once or twice when they find the correct color. Or you could be more structured with this and create a sequence and then incorporate another goal and another level of skill to increase the challenge for your client. You could also turn the boomwhacker upright and sit it on top of a drum head. Set out an assortment of egg shakers in a variety of colors and use those same color cards to ask the client to identify the correctly colored egg and drop it down the tube. They get the bonus of the reward of a reinforcing sound and a novel sound at that to enjoy when they get the answer right. I have to credit my friend Haley Shin here. We were working together 
in a school system this past year, and I saw her utilizing the boom whackers for color sorting, color identification, and some motor coordination, and I just thought it was such a fun and playful way to do it. Simply by turning the boom whacker upright and placing it on a drum, you get a different sound, you get a different motor task, and a really novel way to work on a common goal that you would see in the schools. Now let's talk about sequencing and following directions. Many pop songs only have two to four chords and often a very repetitive sequence. Find a simple and preferred pop song and teach your client the bass note of the chord sequence. For more of a challenge, find a song with a fun riff and learn the riff. I've done this numerous times and it's always a hit and it always makes it more fun for the client to work on a sequence when they can be a little bit resistant to practicing that particular skill. Stephanie Level with Music for Kiddos has a great Boomwhackers song for direction following, taking turns, and just making noise and having fun. I think the song is called Boom Boom Whack, and I believe there's one example on her Instagram where you can see her singing the song. Now on to joint attention and selective attention. I really love to use call and response and improvisation with the Boomwhackers. This is a fun way to get your client to initially attend to a task but also to start building more and more skills and higher level skills in the area of attention. You can start just by giving your client one boom whacker or one boom whacker for each hand, and you can just meet them where they are. Just follow whatever they do. They can be the call and you can be the response. I really like just letting this be organic and following the client and slowly creating more and more structure and more of a pattern. And I've found that clients very often can pick up on that pattern and will start to follow you as long as your pace is good. So it's a really fun way to just have fun with the boom whackers, let them play it on any part of their body that they want to, just keep it loose, keep it fun, but then work towards creating more of that sequence and more of that structure. You could also choose to be the call first and to have them be the response and start in a more structured way with a specific pattern where you play the boom whacker once and they play it once back and then you play it twice and then they play it twice and then three times. Or you could work on specific rhythms and having them call back those rhythms. There's a million different ways to do this one, but I think it's a really fun way to work on attention skills because of the novelty, because of the fun, and because of the sensory input that the boom whacker provides. On to motor coordination. We already talked about this a little bit earlier, but grab some egg shakers and ask your client to drop them down the tube. Place the boom whacker upright on a drum and enjoy the sound that happens when the egg reaches the bottom. We were talking about this earlier when we were talking about color identification, but if your client is working on some motor skills, this could be a really fun way. And like I said, it's a fun sound, it's a novel sound, and clients very often very much enjoy this. Another thing that you could do is hold the boom whacker horizontally between your palms with an egg shaker inside. You could practice motor control by challenging your client to move side to side, up and down, and in a circle while still keeping the egg inside the tube. They get that reinforcement of hearing the egg move around in the tube, and they get to really practice those motor skills in a very focused way. Another goal that could be addressed using the boom whackers is to promote autonomy and self-expression. You could create a pentatonic scale with the boom whackers and have them set up almost like a xylophone where they're laying on the ground or they even make those xylophone attachments for boom whackers. It's a bag with some straps where you just put the boom whackers inside and then hit them with a mallet. You could just encourage your clients to explore and to improvise and to come up with some fun patterns. And if you set it up as a pentatonic scale, that gives you a little more freedom and flexibility to create some structure to the music that you're providing and complementing their music with. You could have your client create their own song using the color cards we mentioned earlier. They don't have to be able to read the music. They can simply lay out the color cards in the order that they like and then follow that sequence on their boom whackers. And you could just enjoy the organic music making of the moment, or you could even record that and turn that into a larger project that you work on over time. One of my favorite ways to use boom whackers is to provide sensory input and to promote regulation. 
a boom whacker can provide tactile and auditory input that might just meet your client's needs. This can be provided in a very unstructured moment throughout the session as needed, or as a very intentional structured recreation of the song where you have them play their boom whacker in a specific way on a specific part of their body to provide that input. I've even tapped the boom whacker on a client's back before because they like the way that vibration and input feels for them and it's very calming and soothing. So it could be really fun to just explore with your client to see how it feels to play the boom whacker in different ways and find the way that provides the best form of input for them so that it's pleasing, not just auditorially, but also tactile, um, even with the vibration, just getting that feel just right for them to meet their sensory needs. A lot of music therapists provide adaptive music instruction for their clients. I know we do this a lot at our clinic, and we're always thinking of really creative ways to teach the elements of music. You can learn rhythm, melody, harmony, dissonance, and so many other musical concepts with the boom whackers. And it's also highly accessible. They don't need to be able to read music yet or know the notes on the scale just yet. They can focus just on the colors until they start to get those elements of music in their brain and really understand how music works. And then you can build up to actually reading music. You can work on note identification or even just being able to follow a basic lead sheet with colors. You can do song recreation using the bass line or even with chords. And it can be a lot of fun to help teach those fundamental skills in an adaptive lesson. For clients and students with visual impairments, you might consider adding a textural element to your boom whacker. You could take some Velcro and attach different textures to the top of the boom whacker so that they can still practice sequences, melody, harmony, dissonance, and all of these other elements but in a way that does not require them to be able to discern colors. Another goal that I've addressed using boom whackers in the schools is for coin identification. I was trying to think of a more creative and fun way to work on identifying coins. So I laid out the coins on the drum head and then I had the boom whacker sitting upright on the drum head. Again, grab a few egg shakers and instruct your client to choose the appropriate coin hand you the coin, and then they can drop the egg down the boom whacker. I'm going to sing a little bit of the song for you. If you want to drop the egg down the tube, down the tube, it's going to cost 25 cents. If you want to drop the egg down the tube, down the tube, then it's going to cost 25 cents, 25 cents, 25 cents. It's going to cost 25 cents. 25 cents, 25 cents. It's gonna cost 25 cents. And then you would replace that 25 cents with whichever other coin you're choosing. And that B section of 25 cents, 25 cents might not be necessary for everyone, but for the clients that need a little more processing time to be able to identify and sort the coins and find the correct one, I found that that extra little few bars was really helpful for them. I'm not going to attach this next idea to a particular goal because I think it has a lot of flexibility to be used so many different ways. But the song Drop It Like It's Hot by Snoop Dogg is a favorite of mine. And the instrumental version is really fun. And I've also had that instrumental version playing in the background. And then we just have fun dropping the eggs down the tube. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. And it's a lot of fun. Um, I think you could probably rewrite that song a hundred different ways so that it's clean and has the appropriate cueing and directions for your client. But clients that have never heard that song really enjoy the beat and have a lot of fun just dropping the eggs in. It's very playful and motivating. And I hope that you can come up with some fun ideas for using that one. All right. The last way that I'm going to talk about using boom markers today is just as a way to build rapport. We know that children learn through play. And we know that 7 out of 10 elementary age clients will attempt to turn their boom whacker into a lightsaber. Instead of fighting or redirecting this behavior, consider it an opportunity to build rapport with your client. Play with your client, improvise, and think on your feet to bring some musicality to the moment. 
As you can imagine, the possibilities are endless. I hope you come away from this episode with some fresh ideas for this unique tubular instrument. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in to Music Therapy and Beyond. For show notes from today's episode, head to our website, musictherapyandbeyond.com. And while you're there, check out our shop. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe to share our work on all platforms. And don't forget to tune in every Monday for another great episode. We'll see you next time.